Hey guys, welcome back to another project video. It's been a while since I've done a video, and um, uh, family life, and you know, going to Disney and doing all kinds of stuff has just kind of consumed most of my free time. Uh, but I'm trying to uh, solve an issue here that I'm having with these uh, these spray paint cans. Um, I've got quite a few of them, and uh, they're in a drawer, and that seems to be a pretty hard thing to. Uh, sort through when, you, when you're when you looking for a particular uh, color. So you end up buying what you need when you really don't need it because it's it's hiding in the drawer. So what I've got here is an eight foot door and uh, this is the side door to my shop. And I'm gonna build a shelf system on this door that hangs on this door um, to store all these spray paint cans. So uh, stay, uh, stay tuned and uh, I'll bring you along with me and show you how I did it. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll do the same thing. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so what I have here is a piece of stainless steel um, and before I make any, any cuts to the stainless, I want to draw a template out of the, the bracket that's going to support the shelf over the top of the door. I'm going to cut this and then I'll, I'll bend it at these locations, but I wanted to make a template out of some cardboard to ensure that I'm not going to waste this material. It's pretty expensive, stainless steel. So uh, basically cut this, you know, cut one layer of the cardboard and um, test fit it over the door to make sure it's, it's going to be the right size. Now I'll transfer these marks to the material uh, when I put it in the brake to bend it. So As you can see, I'm going to make one, two brackets to hang the shelf on the top of the door. I don't want to put any holes in the door. Uh, it's a it's a fiberglass door. It's it's really not meant to have holes drilled in it. So I don't I want to preserve the integrity of the door, and I also want to be able to move this around a little bit. Um, and. Uh, this is the best way I know to support the weight of the, the paint cans and the shelf itself is by using this, this type of bracket. This is pretty strong material. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the plasma cutter and I'll cut this out. Okay, there's all the uh, brackets cut out. Uh, now we just gotta take them over to RV Kubota Man's shop and have him bend these brackets, these flat pieces, into this shape. And then I can drill the holes and uh, attach them to the, uh, the frame that I'm gonna build. Okay, so we're over here at uh, RV Kubota Man's shop. He's got a nice customized brake press, so we're gonna uh, bend that stainless steel and uh, let's get started. Okay, so we got it all bent up. This is the finished product here, and um, not gonna paint it or anything. Just gonna just gonna drill some holes in it, attached to the wood frame, and um, that uh, uh, brake press that he has worked out real good. I think it worked out pretty good. Yeah, on the I, think, I, I think it worked out real good with, with, with the stainless. I bent the uh, eighth inch uh, about a week ago. I'm making a bracket over here, and 
it, it bent this uh, fairly easy and quite well, so I was, I was very pleased with it. Instead of having to cut it and weld it, uh, it turned out good. So here's the result, the end result here. As you can see, it turned out pretty good. I think the radius on the uh, stainless is a little bit less. I think it's a little bit less than, than, the, than, than, the, than the metal, than yeah. the car carbon steel. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to continue on with the build, and I appreciate you letting me use your shop and bending this up for me. Anytime. We always get together. i got to make something. <laughs> yeah. All right. One of the things I like to do when I'm, I'm doing something like this where I'm making a, uh, a shelf or I'm, I'm making something parallel, just cut these spacers. Now these are 12 inches and they're simply going to slide in there. Where there's no marking or measuring or anything like that. They're cut and they're ready to go. I can just pop a couple nails in there and they'll be in place. Okay, so here's, here's something that you, if you're going to do something like this, you want to take your measurement side to side and um, draw your line on your board where you're going to cut it a piece. And then you want to make it so that when you cut it, you're going to leave the line. Because when you put it into place, it's not going to just slip right in. You want to... Bend it up in the center. And spring it into place. That keeps these joints here nice and tight. It's going to want to bow and warp, but that's okay. So we're going to make sure it goes where we want it. With the pins. Okay, all the edge banding pieces are on, and uh, 
Everything's been sanded down. It's nice and smooth. And I also, I also made the retainers for the, <clears throat> the cans. These were cut out of a two by four, a fairly nice two by four as a matter of fact. I rounded, rounded the edges over uh, so you didn't uh, get any splinters or cut your hand when you uh, remove the cans. Just got to drill some holes in it and uh, fasten it to the, uh, the front face. All right, guys, well, there it is. And uh, that's gonna wrap up this project. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the way it turned out. Um, I haven't put any polyurethane on it. I'm just gonna give it time to uh, reuse the door and just make sure it's not gonna put any unnecessary stress on the hinges that, uh, that, that the door can't handle. Open the door here. Seems to operate okay. Um, really no way to tell at this point how this is going to impact the, the hinges. Um, there's four or five hinges on this door, so I, I think it'll work okay, uh, but only time is going to tell. Uh, this door usually doesn't open and close 100 times a day. It, it, it opens, and I leave it open, or it's closed. Um, so that wraps this project up, and um, I just want to Thank you for watching, and uh, if you'd like to see more projects like this, give me a thumbs up, and uh, leave a comment down below if, if you, uh, you want to chat about this. Um, again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.